In the previous lecture, we discussed Gauss's law, and we said that Gauss's law is a more general statement of the relationship between electric fields and electric charges. In other words, it's more general than Coulomb's law. In fact, in this lecture, we're going to derive Coulomb's law from Gaussian's law, as we'll see in just a moment. So, in order to actually use Gaussian's law, we have to choose a certain region of space. So, we choose a spherical region with radius given by lowercase r, as shown in the following diagram on the left. The reason we choose a spherical region is because a sphere has symmetry, and that will come in handy in just, in mo in just a moment in making simplifications. So, this green section is our chosen Gaussian region, which is a three-dimensional region. So next, we take a positive point charge and we place that positive point charge directly at the center of our sphere. And we let that charge have quantity of uppercase Q. Now, the reason we choose a point charge is because Coulomb's law is a relationship between electric fields produced by stationary point charges. So we assume this is a stationary point charge. Now, notice that because of the symmetry of the sphere, the electric field at any point on the surface of our region is the same exact in magnitude and will point directly outward. And that's because our electric field lines begin on the positive charge and will extend outward in all possible directions, as shown in the following diagram. So, if we examine any section on the surface of our sphere, we shall see that the electric field lines point in the same direction as shown here, directly outward. Now, if we choose an infinitely small surface section given by dA through which this electric field vector points, that will mean that our vector of electric field will point in the same direction as the dA vector. In other words, our dA is parallel to our electric field vector, and that will become important in just a moment. Now, let's actually apply Gaussian's law. So, we chose our region, known as the Gaussian region, and we placed the charge inside. Now, we actually want to use that law to prove to show Coulomb's law. So, let's begin by using electric flux. So, the electric flux is equal to the closed integral of the dot product of our vector E and the vector dA. Now, by the definition of dot product, the dot product is equal to the product of the magnitude of E multiplied by the magnitude of dA multiplied by the cosine of the angle theta between these two vectors. Now, we said that these two vectors at any given point point in the same exact direction. So that means the angle must be zero. So since the angle is zero degrees, cosine of the angle zero is one. So this entire cosine of theta simply becomes one and we get the following result. Now, because by the symmetry of the sphere, our E is constant at every single point on the surface of that sphere. And that means our E is a constant. So we can take that constant out of our integral as shown. So now we have our electric flux is equal to our E a constant multiplied by the closed integral of dA. And if we evaluate this, we simply get the product of E multiplied by the surface area of our sphere. Now, the surface area of any sphere is given by the product of 4 pi multiplied by the radius squared, where the radius is given by the lowercase r because we chose our radius to have a lowercase r. We chose our sphere to have a radius of lowercase r. 
Now we actually apply Gaussian's law, which states that the electric flux given by phi E is equal to this quantity, which is equal to our charge enclosed within our chosen region divided by the permittivity of free space given by epsilon naught. Now we can replace Q enclosed with simply Q because that's what we chose our charge to be in the beginning. So the Q enclosed becomes the Q. So now this is equal to this and if we take this quantity and bring it to the right side, we rearrange and solve for the electric field, we see that the electric field as a result of our point charge that is stationary is equal to the quantity of charge Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by the radius squared. And the radius is the distance from our point charge to the surface of our sphere. In fact, this is our electric field form for Coulomb's law. So we were able to derive Coulomb's law directly from Gaseous law.